Hi, welcome to this Corporate Maths video. In this video, we're going to look at coordinates and we're going to look at how to answer questions in evolving shapes, so how to plot coordinates to complete given shapes. So here we've got a typical question. We've got a grid and we've got three points, the point A, the point B and the point C. And we're told that A, B, C, D is a rectangle. So there's another point D and it would complete a rectangle. And we've been asked to write down the coordinates of the point D. So we need to consider where D would be on this grid to make A, B, C, D a rectangle. Now remember with a rectangle that the opposite sides are the same length. So that means that, for instance, if this length is 1, 2, 3, 4, this side over here would be 1, 2, 3, 4. So that means that D would be here. So that means that D would be this point here, D. And it would be the point with coordinates 9, 4. So the core right down the coordinates of the point D it would be 9, 4, because we've got 9 across and 4 up. So the point D would be here, and I found that by considering this left-hand side of the rectangle and the right-hand side of the rectangle, and it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, so it would have to be 1, 2, 3, 4. I could have considered the lengths, so I could have considered the top of the rectangle, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 across. So we then consider the bottom of the rectangle, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so that would be there as well. So the coordinates of the point D would be 9, four and that's it so that's how we'd answer that question okay let's have a look at another question so this time we've got a grid and we've got the points a b and d and we're told that a b c d is a kite so a kite so remember a kite is a quadrilateral a four-sided shape and it's got one line of symmetry and we've been asked to plot the point c so we want to plot the point c the fourth vertex of this kite the fourth corner of this kite now if we have a look at it i'm thinking well if it's got a line of symmetry the line of symmetry would be down here so that means that if a is over here somewhere that c would be have to be over here somewhere and let's consider the line of symmetry the line of symmetry would be down here so if the point A is 1, 2, 3 to the left of the line of symmetry, the point C would be 1, 2, 3 to the right of the line of symmetry. So the point C would have to be over there. So that would be the point C. And we've been asked to plot the point C. There we go. We've plotted it. It's the point 4, 2. And I know we've not been asked to, but let's just complete the kite and let's just see it's a kite. So let's join up B to C and from C to D. And as you can see, A, B, C, D would be a kite. And that's it. We plotted the point C. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So this time we've been told two sides of a parallelogram are shown below. So we've got this grid and we've got a two sides of the parallelogram. So we've got AB, that's one side of the parallelogram and the side BC is another side of the parallelogram. So we've got those two sides of the parallelogram. And the first part of the question actually just asks us to write down the coordinates of the point A. So we've been asked to write down the coordinates of this point here, A. So in terms of finding the coordinates of this point, let's open up our brackets and let's consider how far along the x-axis we're going. So we're going to negative 3, so that's going to be negative 3, and then we're going up 1, so it'll be 1. So the coordinates of point A would be negative 3, 1. So that's the coordinates of that point. Okay, next, let's have a look at our next part of the question. So the next part of the question says, well, we've got the two lines of the parallelogram, shown below, and we've been asked to draw two more lines to complete the parallelogram A, B, C, D. So we want to complete this parallelogram. So to complete this parallelogram, well, let's consider some of the properties of a parallelogram. The opposite sides are the same length as each other, and they're also parallel. So we can use that bit of information to figure out where this point D would be. So let's consider the line here, A, B. So to get from A to B, we're going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 across. So that means if we want to find out where D would be, it would be up here somewhere. So let's start off at C and let's go 6 across. That would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that means the point D would be here. So that's there, point D. So let's just check that. A, B would be parallel to D, C. So they're parallel to each other. And they're the same length. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let's also consider the left-hand side and the right-hand side. To get from A to D, we would go 1 to the right and 2 up. And to get from B to C, we also go 1 to the right and 2 up. So they're also the same length and parallel as well. And that's it. So it says draw two more lines to complete the parallelogram. So let's draw those lines. Let's make sure we do what the question asks us to do. So let's connect up D to C. So we've drawn the top of the parallelogram. And let's connect up A to D. So we then complete that left-hand side of the parallelogram. So we've completed the parallelogram A, B, C, D. Okay, and the next part was to write down the coordinates of the point D. So we need to write down the coordinates of this point D. So let's go to the origin. We're going to negative 2 in the x-axis, so it's going to be negative 2. And then we're going up 1, 2, 3. So the coordinates of this point D would be negative 2, 3. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So we've been given this grid, and we've been given the points A, B, and C, and we've been asked to plot the point D so that A, B, C, D is a square. So we want to plot the point D on this grid so that A, B, C, D is a square. So remember, a square has got four sides, and all four sides have got the same length. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to join up A to B and B to C to begin with, just to join up those two sides of the square. So A to B, and from B to C. 
and I've just done that to help me find out where the point D will be on this grid. Now in terms of finding out where the point D is, there's a couple of approaches you could use. One approach would be to actually consider the length of each one of these sides. So how do I, do I get from A to B? So to get from A to B, I go 1, 2, 3, 4 across, and 1, 2 up. Now to get from B to C, I would go 1, 2, 3, 4 up, and then 1, 2 across. So to get from C to D, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 across, and I'm going to go 2 down, 1, 2. So this point here would be the point D, because to get from each one of the points, you're going 4 and 2. You're going 4 across, 2 up. You're then going 4 up and 2 across. You're then going to go 4 across and 2 down, and then you're going to go 4 down and 2 across. And let's just check that, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2. So this would be the point D, and we can actually join them up. And as you can see, we've now got our square. All four sides have got the same length, and A, B, C, D is a square. So that's one approach, and I've just considered how would I get from A to B, how did I get from B to C, and then how would I get from C to D. And in, the, in this case, you're just going four and then two. Four across, two up, four up, two across, four across, two down, and then four down, two across. So that's one approach. Another approach would be to actually get a ruler. And remember that you know that all the lengths of the sides are the same. So if we measure the length of BC, and if we measure the length of BC, I get that's equal to four centimeters. And then that we know that the line AC is going to be parallel to BC. So if we just move our ruler along, keeping it in the same direction, to the point A, like so, and then we go to four centimeters, you can actually then find out that the point D would be, well, if we go to A and we keep the ruler in the same direction so it's parallel to the line BC, and we go to four centimeters, you get the point here. And then if we just move our ruler away, you can see that would be the same point, that point 0.36, that's the point D. And that's the point D, and that's it. And then we could complete the square if we wanted to. The question is just said to plot the point D, so there we go, we've plotted the point D at the point 0.36, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at one more question. So this time we've got a sketch of our x-axis and y-axis, and we've been given two triangles, and we're told that these two triangles are identical, or another word for maths for identical is congruent, they're congruent to each other, that means they're identical, the same shape and size. And so we've got this triangle here, and we know that the point here is 0, 4. We've got the point A and the point B, and we've been asked to find out what those points are, the coordinates of those points. And then we've got this triangle here, and in terms of this triangle, we know the top of the triangle is the origin, the point 0, 0. This bottom left corner is the point 0, negative 5. And the coordinates of this point here, the bottom right-hand corner, is 8, negative 5. Now we've been asked to find the coordinates of the point A and the coordinates of the point B. Now, if we have a look at this triangle here, we know this one's identical to this one. So what would be fantastic in this question is if we could find the height of the triangle and if we could find the length of the base of the triangle. So let's consider the height of this triangle. This is the origin, the point 0, 0, and this is the point 0, negative 5. So we're going down 5. So that means the height of this triangle is 5. Now, in terms of the base, this point is 0, negative 5, so 0 along the corridor, 5 down. And this is the point 8, negative 5, so 8 along the corridor, and 5 down. So that means the length of the base here would be 8. We're going 8 across. So the length of this base is 8. And this is fantastic. We now know the length of the base and the height of this triangle. That means that the length of the base of this triangle would be the same, so that's 8. And the height of this triangle would be 5. And that's going to be fantastic. We now can use this information to find the coordinates of the point A and the coordinates of the point B. So let's do that. So in terms of the coordinates of this point here, well, if the bottom right-hand corner of the triangle is 0, 4, this point here, where we're going 8 across, so we're now going to negative 8, 4. So the coordinates of this point here would be negative 8, 4. Because if this is the point negative 8, 4, and this is the point 0, 4, we'll be going 8 along. So that means that that length for the base would be 8. Now, if we want to find the coordinates of the point B, well, the point A is negative 8, 4. Then we're going to go up another 5. So this has got a height of 4. We're going up another 5. So this would be the point negative 8, 9, because we're going up another 5. And if this has got a height of 4, we go up another 5. That will now have a height of 9. So the coordinates of the point B would be negative 8, 9. And that's it. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at coordinates, and we've looked at how to answer questions involving shapes on grids. And I really hope you found this video useful. And if you have found it useful, please like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.